On today's episode of The Happy House, we are at Tonkadale Greenhouse with Jessie and she is going to teach Chandler and Ella and I how to make a fairy garden. A fun activity to teach your kids about gardening. Create a fairy garden with them. Are you thinking about getting a pet? Learn how to make the best choice for your family with tips from the Humane Society. Stay tuned for The Happy House. Are you guys ready to do some gardening? Mm-hmm. I'm at yeah. Tonkadale Greenhouse today with my assistants Chandler and Ella, and we are going to learn all about indoor gardening. Are you guys ready? Set? Go! Let's go. Here we go wow! Oh my gosh! Look at that! It's a camper. <gasps> hey, look. Do you guys want to make your own fairy garden? Yeah. All right. To learn how to make your own fairy garden, a great activity for kids. Follow us. We are at Tonkadale Greenhouse with Jessie, and she is going to teach Chandler and Ella and I how to make a fairy garden, which I am really excited about. I've actually seen these before, and I'm a little obsessed with all of these minis. I love tiny things. <laughs> so um, let's get started. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple different ways to do a fairy garden. You can do an indoor fairy garden or an outdoor fairy garden. Okay. Today, we're going to do an outdoor fairy garden. Um, but you could possibly bring it indoors. So the important thing to think about is where your fairy garden is going to be. If it's going to be outside, you're going to want to make sure that your container has drainage. Okay. So a way to accomplish drainage in a container like this would be to drill a hole in the bottom with just a regular drill. However, if it's a container that you cannot drill or don't want to drill, maybe it's something important, you don't want to damage it, or say you're using a terrarium, like a, a glass right. terrarium or something where you don't have drainage, there are ways to kind of get around that. And so what we, we recommend is um, layering your container. So the first thing you would do is put charcoal on the bottom. Chandler, could you pass us the charcoal? You can pass the whole bag. Okay. Whole bag of charcoal, Chandler. Okay, so, so this is the charcoal. That's charcoal. It's, um, it just acts kind of as a filter. It helps keep the soil fresh so it doesn't get swampy and stinky. Okay. So that's the first layer. So we start with the charcoal. Yep. And then, then what the, comes next? The next layer would be rocks. Okay. What kind of rocks do you have here? We have, you could just use pea gravel. Uh, this is river rock. Um, you could use a colored rock uh, if your container is see-through. Um, we're going to actually use this rock um, as a soil cover at the end of our fairy garden, but that could be okay. your next layer. And this is really pretty, actually. I mean, it yeah. isn't colorful, but I, I like it. I like yeah, the, it's okay. kind of natural looking. Nice. Okay. So that's the rock. So that'd be your... Um, so gravel, then rock. Yep. Okay. And then just potting soil. So you want to use an all-purpose potting soil. Okay. So that's something that has, you know, good drainage, lots of good nutrients, etc. Is that this? This yep. organic potting mix for all potted plants. Okay. Yep. Yes. So all there's right. the potting soil. All right. So we've prepared our bed, our mm -hmm. fairy bed, so to speak. Now what comes next? What you kind of want to do is think of a theme for your fairy garden. What are your fairies up to? Are they in the woods? Are they having a party? What are they doing? Okay. Do you want to kind of vacation? Maybe vacation. they're on vacation at the park. Mm -hmm. I like. What else do you guys think? What else? Vacation in Florida. So you start with your biggest elements first, and okay. you kind of just lay them out. You know how you want them. So I usually put, you know, like the, the camper in the back. Do you guys want to pick out some of your favorite things and and what? Let's go one at a time. So Chandler, what do you see? For like the lake. For the lake? Where should that go? So another thing about fairies, they need water. They need a place to drink. They need something to eat. They eat nectar, so they need flowers. They eat other sugary things also, so like candy or cake, lemonade, things like that. So fairies basically get to live in a mystical world and eat sugar. Yes. Perfect. Sign me up, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so now what comes so we next? We have the canoe, so that means we have to have some water, okay. which is great. Okay. I don't know, do you think maybe a bridge so they can cross the, a bridge? Ella, what do you think? Do we need a bridge? Yeah. We should put like in front of the canoe and we could use this as water. Yeah. Oh, okay. In front of the Perfect. canoe, like right there? Does yeah, that work, that's Jessie? great. Next we need to kind of do our landscaping. We kind of know what our layout is, but I think we need a little more soil just to make it higher. Okay. And then we'll kind of push the soil around to make our landscape. So we have the some potting soil here. We remember that our camper was going to be in the back and then a, we have to have some sort of a river. Okay. So we're going to have our water right here. So it's kind of good to define those areas. And then, you know, if you have a house or, you know, in this case, the house is the camper, you kind of okay. want to press it down so that when you're watering and stuff, 
You don't have, um, you know, a sinkhole. So I'm thinking the camper here will probably have like a patio or a sitting area here. Okay. And you know what? I have a patio all ready to go. Okay. So. Okay. Should I put the camper back in? Yeah. Okay. So you could make a patio out of like the river rock. We could do something like this. Okay. There's a, you know, maybe we have a path coming from the door or something. Um, you kind of got to play with it. So now we can put in some of our plants. So we kind of picked out a selection of some of the most popular things. It's like ivies. Um, this is called baby tears. That this is one my is very favorite plant. Really popular. I love baby tears. And then um, you can use things like this is a fern or a house plant. You can use that as a tree or as a shrub. So we just pop them out of the pot. So, so actually, you're actually breaking that in half. Yeah, this one, this was a four inch fern. I think I can break it in half. So, okay. you know, we might need some greenery kind of behind the camper. Um, the baby tears I like to use as like a place for the fairies to sit or just a way to kind of fill in space. Okay. What's kind of neat about this is you can like break it apart. So maybe Do we you have, see? you know, a hedge over on this side kind okay. of along that path. So that goes in there. You know, all okay. of this stuff you just kind of trim with the scissors to keep it the size that you want. One of my favorites, and you probably like this, is this is polka dot plant or hypoestes. This Look is, how teeny they are. This is a great little, um, just a little accent. It adds color. I think um, a lot of this is about, you know, color and brightness and things like that. This is angel vine and this is a creeping fig. I kind of like this creeping fig because of the white it has on it. It could climb up the side of the camper. Just like ivy would climb up the side yeah. of a house? This is an established campground. <laughs> you know, they come there every summer, so this fig has been growing for years and years so we just kind of pop it in and maybe our our bridge is kind of like there oh goes over the water this is so this is the path we did for the water so that's how you cross we always have little different kinds of blooming plants for each season so there'll be poinsettias for christmas and moms for fall okay and the thing to know about these is they're not going to bloom forever what you can do is just plant them right in the pot just pop the whole thing in and then when it stops blooming you just take it out come and get a new one and put so it in it's place. like an annual for the fairy garden. Yes. Okay. So I just put the container right in. Yeah, you just pop the whole thing okay. in. Okay. And I think I'm going to put some more of this sedum here because this is kind of like, um, you know, a grassy place after the bridge. You know, you can leave some some areas not covered with plants because you want room for things to grow and fill in. And then you can add some moss and rocks at the end and we'll do that. We've planted all of our plants. Jesse helped us make this area for the river. We're gonna now put in this blue rock so we can make our river, right? Ooh, oh, that is so pretty. Now we do have to be careful because we don't want our water to get dirty. So okay. from here on out, we gotta be a little careful. Okay, now what comes next? I think we need to um, cover the rest of our soil with either moss or pebbles. So we have, this is just green sheet moss and it does fade a little bit as it dries out. One trick that we've learned is you can mix up like green food coloring with water and continue to spray the moss so it stays green. So you just kind of use it to fill in where the soil is showing. Um, of course, your plants will continue to grow and then fill over the moss as well. And while you're doing the moss, we're gonna add some rock, bigger rocks. So some bigger rocks just kind of rough it up and make it look kind of cool. So it's kind of neat, help? you know, maybe you'd see some boulders along a stream bank. Do you want to do the rocks? Okay, so just kind of place them around the river. Where are you going to put the moss? Yeah. Right. Did you find a spot? Cool. I want some pebbles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, pebbles on the side of the path. Yeah, you could like line the path with pebbles or... Oh, that would be cute. Perfect. I have these kind of colorful buttons. These are really cool. You could actually make a path with buttons or... Um, you know, make little chairs with button tops for fairies oh, to sit cute. on. But I thought they might be kind of cute just, you know, pushed in the water, like just to they add They look some, like inner tubes or like, something. Yeah, <laughs> like little floaties or yeah. inner tubes. Do you want to put a few buttons in the water? I thought that would be kind of cute. I want to put some like random pebbles. And then, random pebbles? Okay. Yeah. We need a fairy garden that is the size of this table. I think, yeah, we really do to have a, you know, a real live campground. It would be, oh, and, oh, then, yeah, and, the and canoe. then canoe. Chandler, how do you think it should be? Like leaning up against the rock? Like they just got done canoeing? 
there on yeah. the bank of the river. Exactly. So it kind of, yeah. And, yeah. and that's the, kind of the fun part. You can move stuff around. Sometimes the fairies move stuff when you're not looking. And then there's just other little things you can poke in. Like it's kind of fun to do like a trio of bird houses, big, medium, small, you know, just to kind of have fun. And this is kind of, you know, you can collect items. Like maybe the first day you buy the camper and the bridge yes. and the plants. And then the next time you come, you buy the canoe and, and the frog and the birdhouses. It's kind of about um, collecting and creating a story and doing it together. So it's fun. What I like to do at our house too, because we've actually planted a fairy garden, nothing as elaborate as this, but we've used things that we actually have yeah. in the house. I mean, I actually have a button collection, so you can yeah. use your own buttons. And then we have um, small animals that we like to put in there, but I mm -hmm. think you can do that and then layer on a whole bunch of things so it really mm -hmm. is yours. Yeah. You, sock, you could put a sock monkey in. A sock monkey? <laughs> the fairies sure. would love that. <laughs> but you know what? The last thing we have to do is to pick our fairy. So there are so many fairies um, to choose from. Um, you just kind of have to pick the fairy that speaks to you and think about what they are doing. I want that blue oh. one. You want the blue one? I, the blue one should be like right there. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that one can just go right in because there's like a door. I don't know if we'll be able to fit the fairy in. Let's hear it. Let's watch what Jessie's going to do. So all the fairies come with a little pick so you can stick them in where they need to go. Okay. So he could be like overlooking. He could be flying. He could be, flying. He could be standing on the bridge. He yeah. could be getting ready to walk down the path. You know, wherever you kind of want them. Do you like them on the bridge? Do you want to put them in the bridge? But that was my family. Well, you want to put them on there? Okay. Yeah. You're right. welcome. Perfect. Yeah. Chandler, thanks, Ella. All right. So then when you're all finished, you're going to want to water it in. When you're watering, you just want to water the individual plants. You know, you don't want to take a garden hose to it. Okay. Just pay attention to each little plant that's in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't do that. Perfect. Either. Okay, are you going to water a plant for us? We don't have a watering can. Up We're just. Are you, we can use the spray bottle also to just kind of mist everything and get the um, get the dust and the dirt off of all of our plants. This is Buttercup. Where should she go? Well, we can have one that looks like a buttercup thing, and oh, she could be climbing up that well, ladder. That you know where I kind of like her is right by this yellow plant. You know why? Because I feel like she might be trying to hide from the hiding. other fairy, yeah. and that is the closest. So then she, he can't she, see her because she's, she's in the yellow. Or she's smelling the flowers. Or yeah, she's smelling the flowers. Thinking, he's thinking where she is. They're yeah. playing hide and seek. They're playing hide and seek. Yeah. There you go. Thank you oh, so much yeah. for helping us with this, Jesse. Sure. This is so amazing. And thank you, Chandler and Ella, for helping. Ella, we need your wand to give it the magic touch. And we have a perfect fairy garden. So through the magic of editing, we've shown you this in about seven minutes. However, we've been working at this project for well over a half hour. So it's a really great activity to do with kids, but not only is the planting of the garden fun, shopping for the garden is fun, and then also the upkeep after teaches responsibility and just teaches sort of a respect for life, I would say. It's a really great, great thing to have in your house. So if you want to see the entire process, visit our website. We're at the Animal Humane Society today and I'm with Carrie and we're going to talk about how to know if your family is ready for a pet because it actually is a really big commitment. It is. It can be many, many years of a commitment. So we want to make sure everybody's really ready and there's a few things to consider before picking out a pet. Okay, so what's the number one thing families should think about before they, maybe before they even visit the Animal Humane Society? Yep. The number one thing is the responsibility. Are you ready for the responsibility that comes with a pet? So feeding the animal every day, caring for it, and really providing it with socialization, companionship, it's an everyday thing. What do you have time for? Do you have time to walk a dog every day? If you don't, maybe a cat is better. Animals can be very expensive. They require a lot of veterinary care and daily food and everything. So do you have the money to pay for an animal? Okay. So kind of think about which animal would be best for your lifestyle. I think sometimes people are maybe afraid to come to a humane society because they figure, oh, those animals are, are bad or they were turned over for some reason. So can you talk to me a little bit about that part of the decision-making yeah. process? There's a lot of misconceptions about shelters, that they're all old, neglected, you know, animals that are 
damaged, but they're not damaged goods. This sweetheart is Miley. She's a six month old Chihuahua, wonderful behaved, just a great dog. Shelters are full of amazing animals and there are millions and millions of animals in shelters that aren't adopted because people are buying pets. Okay. You know, buying from breeders and buying from pet stores and I just would urge people to really consider shelter adoption because these animals are already here, they're already with us, they already need homes. Right. So don't bring in more animals. Right. Let's get the ones that are here homes. Right, and I mean, I was just, we're gonna go inside a little bit later, but I was briefly inside, and I mean, there are so many wonderful, wonderful yeah. dogs and cats in there, so I think it's just something really interesting yeah. to consider. And a huge variety in every age, from puppies and kittens to older <laughs> se senior dogs and pets. <laughs> Did you see something you like? Miley's standing guard. <laughs> <laughs> she is. And you know, every different breed, if you want a purebred dog, there is a shelter or a rescue group that will have that dog. I mean, it's, you don't need to go to a breeder to get a purebred dog. Okay. Um, yeah, so just look around and, and give yourself some time. And another thing is to not choose a dog or cat based on how they look specifically, okay. because a lot of people will fall for a pet just because they're cute. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of things to consider other than just their looks. Right. If I do my work and I'm really conscientious and mm -hmm. I choose the perfect animal and then it doesn't work out or it doesn't it isn't a good fit what's my step then i come back yep. here and yep you bring the animal back and we bring the animal back into our care find somebody else that's a better fit okay. and then we help you find the pet that's right for you okay it's really all about success because animals i mean this dog could probably live 10 to 15 years right we don't want it to be the wrong fit for the next 10 right. to 15 years so it's right. really important to get that right fit yeah, and that's why a shelter is wonderful because we have really smart people that are they're just animal people they know what's best for people that's actually really helpful because you actually have this huge assortment and then you have a staff that's working with these dogs so it's not just one person who's when I hear about this whole team approach and mm -hmm. all these different people working with each animal it really is a great program mm -hmm. it's it's really fabulous because these animals are all placed with the right person and, and it's really important to them another thing I should mention is um, adopting from a shelter is hugely beneficial in terms of the financial aspect of it because these dogs they have an adoption fee which is how we continue to do the work we do but they're spayed and neutered already they're microchipped they're vaccinated um, they come with a free collar id tag free bag of pet food you really wow. leave the shelter with everything you need uh, you don't have to go take them to get their spay neuter surgery okay. it's all done for them so it's really a cost saving thing that too. is actually yeah and for families that are looking to save some money you get a great dog and right. it's just a package deal it's wonderful well we i have seen this adorable dog but i actually happen to know there's a lot more pets there to are. see inside so can we go inside and that check it out great. okay yeah, let's do thanks it. carrie thank you we're inside now so tell me where are we this is the puppy area okay sort of my favorite area um this is where we keep all our small, young puppies that are waiting for adoption. Okay. They're not here very long. They go home really, really fast. Like sometimes within a matter of hours. That's great to it hear. It is awesome. From what it sounds like, puppies are the most desirable. They're mm -hmm. in and out because people can train them and sort of have the dog from the ground up. But there must be older dogs too. Yep, and you know, a lot of people come in with a wide variety of needs. A lot of people want the older dog. I myself, I don't think I'd bring home a puppy. It's, I actually am very intrigued by the yeah, older dog Yeah, it's kind of well. like having an infant baby at home. It's a lot of work. Yes. So a lot of times people want an older dog. They're already house trained. Um, they might already be really good with kids. They might have lived in a family already. Okay. Um, sometimes we know a lot of information about the older dogs, okay. which helps. But puppies are definitely desirable. It's yes. hard to resist that cute puppy. We don't put a dog in the adoption center until it's ready to be a family pet. Okay. So we have a number of programs and we work really, really hard day and night with these animals to get them to where they need to be to All go right. home and just be a really good pet. Okay, let's, I wanna see some. Awesome, okay. let's go. Okay. How old are dogs in this area typically? There are some puppies in here, but usually anywhere from one year to, you know, 10, 12, 13 years. Okay. Average dog probably lives about 10 to 14 years. Okay. And um, the smaller breeds live a little bit longer than the larger breeds. We're constantly cleaning. It is a never ending job to clean right. around here. The amount of laundry we do would blow your mind. It's <laughs> so much laundry. And we have tons of volunteers who help us with that because we do have staff. 
We have about 200 staff um, between our five sites, but we have about 1,600 volunteers. Wow. So it's very volunteer driven. That is a serious basket of tennis balls. How many tennis balls do you think you go through? A lot. Um, <laughs> hundreds. We have a never ending supply of toys and tennis balls. Tennis balls tend to be the favorite. Well, yeah, look at that. Yes. And if a dog acquires a favorite toy while we're here, we make sure they go home with it. That because is. You know. Well, you have to. Exactly. Sometimes they, they focus in on that one toy. One of the most important things to keep our dogs happy is to get them outside a lot. So we have volunteers who will take them out, play fetch with them, um, take them for a walk, just really get them the exercise they need so that they don't get stir crazy in the kennels. Okay. Um, so we have people that I mean, their volunteer job is to come play with dogs. It's really pretty awesome. That's really great. And then also some people, when they're visiting with animals, they want to see what they're like in an outdoor environment. So we let them bring the animal out and see if, you know, if they're an active family and they want a dog that's going to run around the, the yard a lot. We and let play catch with the kids yeah. or, or fetch and, yeah. and, and that kind of thing. That's, yeah. that's so great. So yep. when they walk the dogs, they just go in the surrounding area? Yep, or? and we have this beautiful wooded area around us, so the dogs get to go on a really nice walk, and mm -hmm. it just gets a lot of their energy out. And yes. they're walked several times a day, so... So we typically think of dogs and cats at the shelter, but there are other kinds of animals too. And are these animals up for adoption? Absolutely. We adopt out 10 different species. Okay. Um, cats and dogs are the most common. Rabbits are number three. And okay. then we've got birds, small critters like guinea pigs, hamsters, okay. mice, rats, ferrets, um, all your little rodent critter yes. type of uh, animals. And it's really something for everybody. You know, um, a cat or a dog is a lot of work. A bunny right. is also a lot of work. Um, a hamster, not as much work. A right. guinea pig, not as much. If you're going to adopt a kitten, be prepared for kitten craziness. Okay. They can be a little crazy. Um, I always tend to gravitate toward the older cats because their personality is... Is established. Yeah, it's established and you sort of know what kind of cat they're going to become. All kittens are generally pretty crazy and then they become a wide variety of cats. Right. Well, it's kind um, of like a toddler. I mean. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> there are a lot of similarities. Kids love animals and we just have a really fun program for them and they get to interact with animals. A lot of them adopt animals yes. while they're here at camp, so that's always a good thing too. Yes. But right. yeah, it's just good to make sure that, you know, the, the next generation will be kind to animals as well. Okay. Our facility is completely privately funded, so we get our money from donations and adoption fees. Okay. So we're not state or government funded. Um, it's just, we really rely on the public to keep us going. That is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it, it, you have to have a lot of money to do a lot of good and luckily the community is really awesome. They love animals, they want to help us, and they want to see us be able to continue to help animals. That's so great. It is. To learn more about the Humane Society and different ways you can contribute and volunteer, visit our website. Coming up next week... We're going to show you how to make something most people dread fun and memorable. The road trip. Are you thinking about going on a road trip? We've got you covered. We'll teach you tips and tricks to make your trip fun for the whole family, even the parents. Coming up next.